What's going on, everybody? Just making sure I've got everything sorted out here. Should be okay. All right, so. A little bit of Mecha Jammer, which is a sort of 80s action film inspired uh, CRPG. I believe they're self-describing it as an immersive sim, but I guess we'll see. So I figured uh, the best thing to do would be go through the uh, tutorial first, just kind of show all the stuff that you can do, and then some of the early game, which I've messed around with, which is uh, a lot of fun, hopefully. So we'll start with the tutorial, which kind of gives you a rundown of all the basic systems of the game, which I would recommend using, to be honest. Now, there's not really any voice acting, so if you're into voice acting, this isn't for you, but for the tutorial, you're just kind of uh, supposed to be like a soldier for the Earth Collective Army, and they're kind of running you through like a quick boot camp type thing, is kind of the nature of the tutorial. Chance says, love the art style. Yeah, yeah, it's very thematic. So first things first, they just want us running through uh, how to walk, but again, this is the tutorial right here, and then we'll get into the actual early game after I kind of show off this part. So first things first, uh, you can actually jump in this game, so that's a thing. Um, you can use it to jump over low walls. You get like that little white line kind of showing you where you'll be jumping to. And then not only over low walls, but you can actually also jump through windows as well, which is what they're showing us right here. Like that. Let me head forward. Oh. Now, every once in a while you'll come across locked doors, which will usually have a key, which in this case they just want you to break some boxes till you find it, which is over here. Oh. Now, in the absence of a key, you can lockpick as well which has a little dice system running in the background uh. and then failing both of those options you can also just break it down which also applies to like windows and things as well so if you just attack it like regularly you can break it down uh. Uh. now the stealth part you just hit shift to go into stealth and then it's uh like sound and sight, basically. So you can see their sight cones on the mini map. What's going on, Red Friend? Uh. Brian says, getting a company of heroes or Blades of the Shogun vibe. Yeah, fair enough. So as you're moving in stealth, you can see those little sound waves. And even if an enemy can't see you, if you get too close of them, they'll be able to hear you and detect you anyway. So you got to watch out for that. And then they also have a little uh, cover system with like a brush and everything. So while I'm in this brush, they can't see me anyway unless I walk too close or something. So that's pretty cool. There's, I was actually messing around with this a little earlier today just to kind of uh, you know get accustomed to it before I actually started streaming. And there's one thing in particular I'm really excited to show you guys, uh, or at least you know I think it'll be worth a laugh once we actually get to that part. Now, we were in the light there, so we got caught. But if you stick to the shadows, you'll be good. There's a lighting system on the stealth as well. Kind of hard to see in this room, actually, but there's a little light in the middle there. Redfriend says, finally finished Wasteland 3 today. It was a cool game. Uh, YouTube copyrights the songs. That's true. Um... Yeah, yeah, Wasteland 3 is amazing. That's one of my favorites, honestly. Uh, I'm looking forward to playing Mutant Year Zero. Uh, yeah, Mutant Year Zero as well. It looks like it's a lot of fun. I've heard mixed things about it, but we'll see. All right. Now they give you the weapon tutorial. So you can open containers and stuff, but throw up your inventory. 
double click to equip, which right now we just have a wrench for the tutorial. Now, it's important to, like, so this uh, game uses what's called simultaneous turn-based, which means as long as I'm not moving, nothing is happening. But the second I start moving, uh, like, everything takes its turn. So you just right-click to attack with whatever you've got in your hand, and then these right here are the different abilities you can use with the equipped weapon that you've got. So there's a little variation there. Um, I don't know exactly how they're timing out the turns, but like there's a turn, like there's a prep and recovery system that you can kind of see there. I'm not uh, sure exactly what the timing on all that stuff is, because it seems unique to this, but it honestly doesn't feel that long, because you can pretty much attack right away, so. But yeah, as long as you're not moving, the enemies aren't moving. Uh. And then they kind of teach you about the uh, knockout ability, which will let you uh, take enemies out stealthily, provided you can get close enough to them. Yeah, so we put that guy to sleep with the knockout. That'll keep them from calling allies and things. And then, as you might imagine, there are, of course, guns. which is this part of the tutorial. I really like this inventory. It's like a random little aside. I like how it just kind of pops up on the side there like that. All right, and then guns work the same way. You just right click, provided you've uh, loaded up. Oh no, they got too close to me. So if you're not, like, uh, specced into guns, your accuracy is terrible. To the point where it's probably not even worth using them. Chance says, wonder how this would translate to console or uh, controller mapping in general. Um, they have options for a controller in the menu, so I assume they've got that sorted out to some degree. But they do have a controller set up if you look at the controls, so... I imagine they've dealt with that to some degree. All right, and then as he mentions there, uh, you can actually target body parts when you're aiming, which you might have noticed me do a little bit there. You can actually, uh, while you're you know not moving, actually aim at somebody's head or their body or whatever. What's going on, Lucas? All right, so this guy has a bunch of armor, so we actually have to aim at his head. But as you can see here, we can aim at his weapon to try to disarm him, his legs, his body, or his head, which is what we're gonna try to hit which is going to take forever. Yeah, like every time, I, like I've done this tutorial a couple times today and I've died so many times every time. Because sometimes you just miss. They do at least re-up the ammo for you though. I don't know if it'll... Or not. There it goes. Wasn't wanting to reload. Alright, let's just not want to cooperate at all at this point. I think I'm crit failing and it's hurting me, actually. <laughs> Oh, or no, the durability. No, durability's fine. Definitely taking damage from trying to shoot, though. Oh, good grief. There. We just wound up having to bludgeon him to death. Michael says, I can never get used to click to move. Yeah, it can be a little, uh, be a little sketchy. There's parts, especially when you're uh, maneuvering around doors in this game, I've noticed uh, the point to click can be a little rough. Hold on, guys. My green screen's all jacking up. With the light going down so early in the day, it keeps kind of messing up my lighting in my room here. All right, so that guy's dead. 
or knocked out, I should say. And we can move on to the next part. Now, this is a bit more on the cover system, so even though these guys will see me, if I'm in cover, they'll have a hard time actually hitting you, which is the tutorial there. Which, you know, if you uh, stealth basically next to a like half wall or whatever, it'll put you in cover. And then hazards on the ground like that can give you uh, wounds, which won't heal by themselves, because most damage will just heal naturally pretty quickly. Because uh, everybody's a mutant, apparently. But if you take uh, wounds, it'll like half your health bar. You'll like uh, see a little reserved portion of the health bar there, which you have to use like a med pack to cure. Which you just do by using it from your inventory. There's also hacking, so these computers kind of look like that. They're a little hard to see, in my opinion, but... Um, you'll hit whatever the first letter is there, so in this case it's O. Which will start it, and then... So far, the username for every single computer I've run into has been admin. I don't know if that's something that changes later. What's going on, Kanos? I don't know if that changes later, but so far it's been admin literally everywhere I've been in the game. And then after you do that admin part, you can roll to hack the uh, passcode, which will be based on your skills at that point, which for the tutorial, I believe, is an auto success. Which opens the door. Yes, this is actually what I was talking about. Um, with the point and click on the mouse and keyboard, if you don't have like a, a line of sight through the door, it won't let you click to move through the door, which is a little frustrating. Okay, so this is my favorite part. Um, there aren't companions, so to speak, or at least not that I've found. What you'll do is that a lot of the NPCs, like the generic people walking around, you can walk up to them, roll to charm them, and then they'll just join your group if you succeed. So now I've got these three people in my party just because I've charmed them into running along with me, which is how it works in the actual game part as well, which we'll get to here in a bit. But um, you can outfit your team with weapons as well. You can also talk to them to find out what they're uh, good at, so they'll kind of explain what skills they do have to you. I have to move everybody out of the way here so I can pick up the rest of those guns. So that's really fun. But uh, yeah, so you just talk to them and then you can ask about uh, their skills or just hand them weapons straight away. Oh, let me, yeah, there it goes. Wasn't letting me grab it. All right, and then. Yeah, so if you ask about their skills, they'll tell you what they're good at as well. So you might, uh, you know, try to give them the appropriate type of weapon. All right, guys, the one we just had. And then once you've got everybody with a weapon and everything, you can actually uh, break all of your followers into squads. Hero Spider-Man says, love the aesthetic on his wish list. Yeah, it looks, uh, it looks like a lot of fun. I'm excited to play through it with this key here. Um, <laughs> Chance Hollow said some charming guy handed me a gun and told me to follow him, so I did. That's how it works. Yeah, so over here, like on the right here, this is where all the squads you have are. Um, you can break all of who you've got into uh, all these different groups as well as tell them to stay behind or you know kick them out by throwing them and leave and best i can tell there doesn't seem to be a hard limit on the amount of people you can have with you like i'm sure there probably is somewhere but i had like 20 people following me around earlier when i was messing around so it seems to be kind of ridiculous but with the one two three and four if you just press one two three and four on your keyboard they will uh, 
do whatever you tell them to do, which in this case will be to attack. Which, uh, everything I just explained is what he's explaining to you uh -huh. here. But we're gonna move... over this way a little bit, so I can get into a slightly better position. Oh, come on. That guy's not being smarter. Yeah, so as you can see, they pretty much all died there, but you get the gist. For whatever reason, my guy's like refusing to target anything. Which means we're gonna die like 20 times because all of our troopers died now. Uh, there we go. It may or may not give them back to me, to be honest. No, I don't think it's going to. Yeah, it wasn't letting me target anything, which is kind of frustrating. Might have been because I was crouched. Not sure. But I'm sure you guys get the gist. Yeah, for whatever reason... Yeah, like, it's not wanting to use my gun for some reason. Try to get that sorted out. The next part of the tutorial is pretty fun, because it's the vehicles, though. I have, like, no skill in guns, so I'm completely missing as well. <laughs> Alright, we might just have to try to melee these guys down, because clearly that's not going to work out for us. Take a minute of me dying repeatedly. Uh, how am I playing this game? There's no demo on Steam. Uh, they sent me a key early, and there's no embargo on it, so I'm allowed to uh, show it off. It releases December 2nd. Oh, come on. Moving through doors is really touchy in some places. Insane Arbiter says... Thank you for helping me enjoy Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous. Your vids kept me from pulling my hair out. Yeah, it can be a... Like, it's such a fun game, but it can be a little difficult to get into it, for sure. Chatton says, game looks really interesting. I'm glad you think so, because I'm playing it terribly. <laughs> See if I can just walk past them. We might just have to reload this because this isn't doing anything. This is frustrating. Oh. 
Sometimes it's like your character just gets like stuck and he won't move. Actually, I think it might be this unit in particular that I'm trying to hit. Okay, yeah, that's that's what it was. For whatever reason, this unit right here is all jacked up. Like, it's not letting me attack that one, and it seems to be uh, not responding to anything going on around it either. So that makes more sense, I guess. Weird. Either way, one of my favorite parts of the game, the vehicles. So if you hit space, you can drive these things. And your companions, if you have the seats, will drive with you. And they will also... Oh my god, what? Jeez. Like it just keeps repeating the uh, dialogue over and over. Or not. Oh, good grief. All right, guys, hold on. I'm going to have to reload it because after that enemy bugging out, now it's just endlessly repeating the tutorial dialogue. But that said, this was the end of the tutorial anyway, so I'll quit out, reload, and then we'll jump into the actual game since the tutorial uh, is clearly not wanting to cooperate here. I really enjoy their intro screen, by the way. Chance says he's just shocked you ran past that guy. Yeah, clearly. <laughs> All right, so uh, we'll actually jump into it. So, again, that was the end of the tutorial anyway. Like, that's the last part right there is you just drive through a bunch of stuff. Our distant future, Earth and her children wage war across the stars. Militant governments police citizens with a heavy hand and draft anyone steps out of line to the war machine. In an age where worlds are counted as casualties, this is where the stories of most conscripts begin and end. Fortunately, your story begins with an unexpected turn of events. So you crash land onto some, like, jungle planet in the middle of some, like, uh, urban decay dystopia with mutants and stuff. But first, you've got to make your character. <clears throat> now, there are presets. If you hit use preset, there's a few different ones you can choose from, which might make it a little easier. But uh, for the most part, you'll answer some questions, which will uh, determine your character's age and what they used to do, which makes, like, a little history for you. And then that'll also come with some disadvantages, but the older you make your character, the less restrictions there are on learning, which will help you uh, critical success on things, basically. So, I'll use what I was messing around with earlier. No, oh, whoops. Actually, hit reset. Ugh. <laughs> But yeah, the age thing kind of makes your backstory in terms of, like, the syndicates, which are kind of uh, these big super corporations, more or less. And then the virtues are what you'd consider your actual, like, uh, stats, if you will. Pain threshold is, like, your life. Um, your life regeneration as well. Quietness uh, just reduces noise, as you might imagine. Muscle mass is increases your uh, physical damage, especially with like uh, you know, melee weapons, that type of stuff. Perception is your weapon aiming, so guns and everything. And then grace is uh, how long it takes you to take actions and things like that. So that's pretty helpful for everybody, I imagine. But you got some dice to throw in that stuff, which will go 
like that. There doesn't seem to be a lot of guns in the early game, or at least not enough ammo to use them consistently, so that's something. Uh, does it have hair, eye color settings? Uh, no, so mostly you'll just pick like a portrait here. And that's pretty much about as in-depth. So I think with how pixelated everything was, they probably just didn't want to go too crazy with the uh, character creation would be my guess. All right, and then your studies, which I'm kind of in the way of, which, uh, what are you gonna do? Um, are your actual skills. The green little letter there to your right, that's your modifier. So you'll roll a D6 on most of this stuff and then that modifier will get added to it. So they kind of do all sorts of it. Uh, most of your skills are combat related and then there's like hacking and repair which I'm kind of covering up down here at the bottom but most of it's weapon stuff. Social which I believe yeah social is what we want the most of really because uh of what we're going to do, which will be kind of funny. Which is probably where we'll leave the stream for the most part. I'm not going to play too terribly much. I just wanted to show this off as much as I could, but got to name our character, and then it should let us complete. Yeah. So we crash landed. Mutants show up. We apparently destroyed some buildings of theirs. But they plan on uh, stripping the ship and uh, taking you guys to fight in some pit, I believe they call it. But your friend comes to, shoots them, and then they run off and uh, raise all these bridges nearby. All right, and then this is Pelican from the demo, actually. What's going on, Jaeger? Um... So, she'll explain that you crashed. You're missing your friend Barry, though, apparently, who didn't seem to crash nearby. And then this little robot is Medic. He can heal you if you need him to. And she'll basically explain everything we just saw. And here's our little Medic robot. That thing looks super creepy to me. I love it. Also explains that you can't really swim away from here because the water would probably turn you into a mutant. Mm -hmm. Alright, she also explains that you guys apparently escaped the Earth Army, which is uh, the general plot setup, but apparently the uh, like anybody who disagrees with what the syndicates are doing, which are like these big ma like mega corporations, they get conscripted and forced to serve the army. So people escaping it isn't exactly unheard of in this particular universe. Now if you need, Medic can heal you up and then there's some stuff to be found around the building here. Before we head into town and start recruiting homeless people into our homeless army. There is, I believe over here there's a key. To some of the doors around here. Yeah, there we go. A little hard to see stuff on the ground sometimes. That's a note. We can add that to our terminal. Um, so our map is a little strange. Like this is the map, which is uh, not 
the best thing in the world to look at. But the white little circle is supposed to be us, I believe, I think. I'm honestly not sure. And you're supposed to be able to drag these pins and make notes out of them, which is something. Um, that said, I don't actually, I haven't been able to get the note part of it to work. But you're supposed to be able to pull pins and then drag them over to the map. Chance says charm some homeless people into fighting. I think I've seen the videos on that. Yeah, it's pretty rough stuff, but uh, that is the gist of what we are going to do. So Pelican's in here trying to make contact with whoever. And you're kind of uh, told to go deal with the mutants or get the bridges down so you guys can do something. Which involves taking out the mutant leader, uh, Three Hand, I believe his name is. And seeing as he's a mutant, I can only imagine that Three Hand is literal. Now the way you get the... Bridges down is to go find the terminal over here. There's a bunch of rats running around though, so you gotta be careful. Jump out the window. Alright, and then... Should be the next building over, I believe, that has the computer here. So, the note over here will give you the password if you're not able to uh, hack it. But the passcode is RKZTG. And that'll lower the bridge, which will let us get back over there. Mm -hmm. All right. Pelican says she was able to radio Barry. Can see the smoke from our ship, but he can't get to us because the uh, bridges are up and he can't get across to where we are. So we're forced to find ways to lower the bridges. Now, I'm going to level with you guys. This is... Uh, a pretty bit like I think like as far as I can tell there's not really like, any difficulty settings for this so there's a bit of a learning curve here like I died so many times trying to figure out how to kill three hand or just like to not die right here because you get you get outnumbered very quickly and the key is really to just start recruiting as many people as you can to help you which are basically all of these homeless people <laughs> that are just kind of all over the place So we're going to have so many of them with us. Sometimes it rolls it twice. I don't know why. All right, so there's... Five. This dude tells us to stay clear of uh, three hand. Let's see if we can charm him too. Nice. Now that said, we have no weapons to give any of them. All right, and then there is a mutant, so we can send all of our vagrants after him. As well as us. Explore a little bit. Shouldn't be too much in these buildings, at least not that I recall. Some rats. Nice. Jaeger says cannon fodder. I mean, yeah, that's the gist. Um, from what little bit I've played, like trying to run around by yourself is really not advised. Like, I'm not going to say it's impossible or anything, but uh, I did not have a good time. 
And like I said, there really doesn't seem to be too much in the way of a limit on how many companions you're allowed to have, so... So three hands base is like up this way. Oh no, we got one of our guys. Yeah. Alright, and then I haven't had any luck with this particular computer, but this one is also supposed to lower some bridges. And even with characters that had a bunch of hacking, I haven't been able to hack this one. Which makes me feel like I have to find the passcode. Chance says, wonder if there's a solo run achievement. Um, I didn't see difficulty settings anywhere, and I haven't uh, seen an achievement list either for that matter, so who knows? Quite possible, though. Right. <laughs> My party just killed that guy. Gonna kill that one. Nice. Okay, so oh. we're just out here doing work now. Hard to see what's going on sometimes, but walk over here where hopefully everybody will follow. And we'll start handing some people some weapons. Volumes low. Uh, it's not so much low as uh, there's just not a lot of sound in this game, to be honest with you. better than nothing. All right. Okay, so three hands like compound is over here. Ah, that guy triggered turn base so everybody's moving slow. Okay, so some of the guys up here have guns, so you gotta be a little careful. Mm, don't know why it's not letting me attack. Before we go any further, let's double check and make sure there's no more people I could possibly recruit hanging around because we will likely need them. Okay, here's a bunch. I think those are just my guys. I think they just teleported to me, actually. Yeah, it kind of looks that way. 
All right, so they will just teleport to you if you get too far away. But I believe, <clears throat> I think that's everybody. Honestly, didn't see anybody else. Oh, there's one. He doesn't want to talk to me though. Okay, we might still die right here, but it will be funny if nothing else. So, as you can see, there are a ton of these guys here. And for whatever reason, it is not letting me attack. Yeah, they're, like for whatever reason, it wasn't letting me target anything. So that's kind of annoying. Uh, but... There you go, guys. There is some Mecha Jammer for you. I didn't want to stream too long. I kind of just wanted to jump in and show this off since I was having a blast kind of just uh, grouping up all these random people. Um, still a little buggy, as you can see, but remember, this is the pre-release version. Um, this isn't even the review version, technically. This is a beta version they had on hand, and then the review version I'll get on the 22nd. Uh, it'll just upgrade the beta to the review copy with a bit of an update, and then... There will be a day one patch, I already know. So uh, a little buggy, unfortunately, which kind of makes it a little hard to show some things off, which is a pain. But honestly, I just uh, had a lot of laughs playing through it earlier, kind of laughing at myself and some of the mechanics, so I thought people would enjoy it. Uh, glad Red Friend enjoyed it, as he said there. So not a super long stream, just kind of wanted to show what little bit I could here with uh, what I had. So hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you guys are looking forward to the release. Honestly, it seems like a really fun game. I'm looking forward to it. I think it's going to be a lot of fun, especially with that ridiculous 80s vibe to it. But thank you so much for watching. May you wander in wisdom and have an amazing day.